guys, do not do not take lightly what this class is. I'm telling you, do not take lightly. Uh, we have been able to come together uh, with, uh, to share. We, we've cried together. We've prayed together. Uh, Hugo has now made sure we've sang together. Hugo <laughs> 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 <For> marriage? <laughs> well, yeah, we kind of married yeah. together. Um, yeah, we, we became a family. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Tim Kirkman earlier on the phone, and, and for those of you that don't know, uh, major, major back pain, just had back surgery, and we was talking, and he said, uh, he knows we have Bible study on Mondays, he said, have your Moses people pray for me. I mean, I know that this room is, uh, you know, everybody's powerful in the name of Jesus, don't get me wrong, but, but uh, make no mistake about what this group means. And for us to be able to get up in front of each other and shed our most intimate moments and lives, and, and you know, God calls each one of us priests. Uh, each one of us are preachers and kings in our own right. So, you know, we're all learning something from each other. I think that's what's incredible. We have a, we have a teacher, we have an apprentice, and we have uh, um, students that are teachers. I learned from you as much. So I just want to read something to you because it kind of, uh, got the, the Holy Spirit led me to two different spots, and I didn't know why. Because I think the first one was because we all know about tithing and giving. Now, we've kind of talked about that every week, right? And, and, the, and, the, and the part of the Bible I was led to was Acts uh, chapter 5. Um, and in the first chapter 5, but, but then he kind of left me before that to close this out. In the first part of Acts chapter 5, he says, uh, a certain man um, came and brought and laid, his, sold his land and brought the possessions away to the feet of the apostles. However, he held, held some back. You know, at this time, everybody was coming and giving everything they had uh, so that no one was in need. He held some back, thinking no one will ever know. And Peter says, you know, why have you lied? He doesn't lie to me. He doesn't lie to man. He lied to God. And the man fell down dead. Thank God nowadays God isn't that dramatic, <laughs> right? Because let's be honest, this is, how, this is where I want you guys to be because we're getting further and further into, into tithing and giving. Guys, I, I almost it was funny, this, this, this statement hit my head or something like, don't play with me and I won't play with you. And it was like wow. God said, don't play with me and I won't play with you. Wow. Meaning, when you get your paycheck, I always like to use the number 300, okay? If your bills are 300 and your paycheck's 300, how much faith do you still have to tie the thirty dollars, knowing you're only going to have two hundred seventy in your bill for three hundred? So, so maybe you maybe you skip it that month, or maybe you only go to ten and you put ten in the tithing envelope. Your pastor don't know what your what your monthly check is, but remember that's what we miss the boat. We that's don't right. give the envelope for the pastor to have money. That's we give right. the envelope, and when we give the envelope, we're giving the envelope to God. Amen. We're giving back to God what He's already gave to us. You don't think if God wants you to have more than a three hundred dollar paycheck, He would have been more? That's a lot of times, God said, don't play with me, and I won't play with me. You know, I, I'll, let me show you how I'll turn that 270 into 2,700. Uh, that's stuff what Donald was talking about in our business. Um, it was just acts and steps, but a lot of it was done on faith. And, and there was a guy that came up to us Sunday and gave me a word, and it just blew my mind because he said some stuff that I've never shared about my prison days. About I've always told you one of my strong mentors was T.D. Jakes. I never went any farther than that. This man knew who one of my mentors was in prison. Uh, on a TV that, I, that I've never shared because it was just insignificant at the time, but he told it to me, and that's when Lord, I just looked at LaDonna and I was like, you know, I knew it was from God. Um, so guys, you know, don't play with it. Don't play with your tithing and giving. Um, but when Tim got up and shared, he showed me something just a little bit more before that scripture, and it kind of thought, made me think of this, this class. Now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and of one soul. That's us. The believers in this room were of one heart and of one soul. Amen. Neither did anyone say that any one of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witnesses to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and with great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands, of houses, sold them, and brought them to receive the things that were sold. But you see what it's saying? It says when you're a family, no family lacks for anything. What is mine and what is yours? You know, and, and that's what we have here as believers. So, guys, what I want to do is just in your envelopes, uh, we want to take offering uh, 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 beforehand tonight so we can get it turned into the ushers. Uh, before we first started this, we used to take it at the end so we could pray over it. What I'm going to do is pray over your offering right now. Okay? Um, so, if you just give me a few minutes while you fill that out, I'm going to pray. Dear Lord, that we just ask that every single cent, every single dollar, and every single penny that's put inside these envelopes, that you take them and you, and you spread them through the kingdom, that you return them a hundredfold. God, we're believing for bills paid, credit cards paid off. We're believing yes, for, for finances you, to come, checks in the mail, you, rank Jesus. advancements, Father. We're believing for uh, just Thank all you, things possible in the name of Jesus. Father, we are sowing this seed to, into a good soil, into a kingdom that produces. Into a, and into a field and a crop that will produce. We thank you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, put off the Walker stuff until the next week because this this evening the Spirit of God was really dealing with me about something just right away, and I and, I, and even when Shannon started talking, it was really a confirmation. So, Amen. I, I like what she said about patience and be positive. Be patient and be positive. I just like that. What is the message there? Be patient and be positive. If you're not positive, chances are you're not patient because you're not waiting for the thing, so you become negative because you're not patient. Are you getting that? She said be patient and be positive. That those two are going hand in hand. Because if you're not positive, it means you're not being patient. And if you're not patient, <coughs> that means you're not positive. I mean, are you getting that? I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a golden nugget when you, when you said it. And you didn't say it right after another, but after together, you know, and I'm thinking about my own self, my own life. But I need to be patient, I need to be positive. I need to be positive so I can be patient. Amen? So I gotta be positive so I can be patient. I gotta be patient so I can be positive. Because if I'm not positive, I'm not patient. If I'm not patient, I'm not positive. Have y'all got that yet? Patient versus positive. Amen. Amen. And you gotta talk to yourself. What? If you're not patient, I'm not being positive. And if I'm not positive, I'm not being patient. Amen. Amen. So we just need to say to ourselves, guess what? I'm, instead of saying I'm not being positive, say I'm not being patient. And if you feel like you're not being patient, say I'm not being positive. I need to what? Be positive about this thing. Amen. 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 But what I want to talk about today, I want to go to Genesis chapter 1. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis. I remember my first Bible study. I think that was the uh, scripture that the book they said go to. And I didn't know the Bible at all. And I was sitting in the couch. It was either Genesis or, I think it was Genesis. Either Genesis or Matthew. I know it was at the beginning of something. And I was just sitting there and Somebody across the room saw I needed help and came over and opened. You know, I dare went to a Bible. It was an all men's thing, so I didn't have my wife try to get my Bible to. And so, and uh, and they showed me where it was at. And uh, but as he was talking, huh? Were you embarrassed? Deeply. I was. I had two friends do that to me in church in the middle of service. Really? They were sitting on the front row. Mm -hmm. Not cool. Yeah, not cool. Yeah. And so I mean, my pride was I should have asked and said. Genesis? Yep. And they were like, oh, this brother's in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Hey, put your index next time. Yes. Go yes. get go to your index. Five tabs, and I was trying to find it. I was like, Amen. Find it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Three. I want to talk about something. It says this. Let me read verse one. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, shall you, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And so I want to talk about Satan. I want to talk about the devil. Amen. Because there's a lot of people that know about God, but they don't know about the devil. If, you, if you're going to if you're gonna fight a war, the good thing is to, in a war, is yes, you need to know your weapons. Amen. But you also need to know your enemy. Okay. And some people don't even realize that they have an enemy. And then some people don't know how to recognize the enemy. And then there are some people who don't know what to do with the enemy once they recognize the enemy. And so, let me say this. That the closer you get to God, the more you will recognize evil. Yep. The closer you get to God, the more you will recognize evil. It will be certain things that don't look so bad. Now, I remember when I first got saved. I mean, things that I used to do didn't seem so bad. But then when the word started growing and the closer I got to God, even some of the smallest things, you know, my clothes that I used to wear tight, they'd be like, oh, I shouldn't wear that so tight. You know, or, or what happened? Just small little things started to affect me. And so, 
And, and so as I begin to grow in Christ, I begin to see evil. And so, the Bible just said right here that the enemy was more subtle than any beast of the field. And so, say this with me. Satan is subtle. Say, Satan, Satan is, is subtle. subtle. Okay? It's not this big, boom, pitchfork, and argh, you know, that's, that's not the devil. That's Hollywood's version, amen? They've got a rifle. They can kind of make him how they want to make him. But he don't want to be found out. Satan don't want... There's a lot of people, there may be some in here, who believe in God, but do not believe in the devil. They believe in God, but they don't believe in the devil. And we end up fighting against ourselves, we end up fighting against each other, and instead of striving against the enemy. But he wants to be subtle. He does not want to be out in the, in the, in the open. Okay? And he is a master of deception. And I've said this in this class before. He is a master. Now listen, we are no match for the devil. Okay, he's a master of deception. Just if you don't know the story, if you don't know the story, he was up in heaven. He was an angel in heaven. Okay? And he thought he wanted to be higher than God. So he convinced a third of the angels who were in the presence of God to go with him. That's why I say we're no match for the devil. If he can convince a third of the angels who are in heaven to go with him. Are y'all getting this? He deceived a third of the angels who seen God. He is a master of deception. He is a master. Go to, with me to Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4. Let me say this. There is no scripture in the Bible where God says, I want you to be afraid of the devil. No scripture that says fear evil. Fear evil. Oh, you see the movies and you see them and oh, fear evil. There's no scripture in the Bible that says fear evil. There's no scripture in the Bible that says fear the devil. It's not in there. Are, are you following me? Because the movies is like, oh, and the priest is coming in and oh, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, and the exorcist and, and the priest are, they're afraid and oh, because this devil is powerful and oh my gosh. I'm just telling you, it's, it's not in there. You can't find it. There is a scripture in the Bible that says, fear God. It's all in the Bible. He said, don't fear the one that can only destroy your body. He said, don't even fear man, even though he's got a gun to your face. I knew a, a, a minister that came here, and he spoke, he was from California, and somebody held a gun to him. And they said, well, because he's out ministering the gospel, kind of like he was talking about Stephen. And that man looked at him and says, you don't have the power to take my life. He said, God is in control of my life, and you don't have the power to take my life. So if you pull that trigger and it works and it kills me, that means this must be my time. Amen. The man just, he just fled because he thought, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why he wasn't afraid of him? Huh? He believed he feared God more than he did the gun. That's crazy. Kind of like uh, Shannon was showing the story about Stephen. Here he is being stoned. He's not fearing the people. He's at, he actually says this. He says, God forgive them. 
He said, forgive the people for stoning him. And that's what made Jesus stand up. Mm. These people are coming. He meant, I want them to know that. One lady told a story as she was being raped, praying for the guy that was raping her. Asking God to deliver him and set him free wow. at that moment. Wow. We all know the story about the uh, purpose-driven life. Where the bank robber comes in and she begins to, instead of being afraid of evil, she begins to minister Christ. Wow. I had the awesome privilege uh, being in the car business, I mean, I, I've seen God work in miraculous ways, and I've been a part of some, you know, I'm sure Shannon can share similar testimony where the hand of God is just so amazing, you sit back and just say, wow. And I've had so many miraculous experiences that I could probably write a book. And one of those experiences is, how many, raise your hands if you know about the guy who was killed over in the Philippines. There was two, uh, there was two missionaries. Yeah. Uh, the Burnhams, okay? There were two missionaries, they were in the Philippines, and somebody gave them a gift to go to a resort, okay? They gave them a gift to go to a resort, and so they were there at the resort to, you know, celebrate, I don't know what it was, but some people came in and took them because they thought they were wealthy Americans, and what they do is they hold them for ransom, if you've seen some of the types of movies, okay? Well, so it, was, it made national news, okay, the American government got involved and they got the people back, there were fire fight, but the husband was killed. Well, while they were over there, there was a few people, a couple came into my office, I just happened to stand just to help them, and he said, um, he told me, he says, my name is Paul Burnham, my son is captured, over in the Philippines. They have three children. And he says, we don't know, we need, a, we need a minivan now because we don't know when they're going to be released. And so we started a relationship and he said, we're missionaries, we don't have much money and God bless my dealership. My general manager looked at me and he says, Derry, we know what you want to do. Because we found a van but they couldn't afford it. He says, Go back in there, because I told him the story, my manager. And he says, go back in there and sell them the van for what they have in their pockets. Talk about seeing a grown man cry. I walked back into my office, and he was just teared up. So I developed a relationship with him, and when Gracia Berman came back, we had a brand new minivan paid for, no fanfare, didn't advertise it, paid for all the services. And so I got to see her. She came in and she was like, thank you to me. And so I got to know her pretty well. And so she began to tell me the story about her husband, Martin, who was killed. And in the face of these enemies and the guerrillas, she says, I thought my husband was a good Christian man. She said, but when we went over there in the jungle with these captors, she says, that's when I found out what kind of Christian my husband was. She said he was ministering life to them. He was showing mercy to his captors, preaching and praying for them daily. All I'm trying to say is that we don't have to fear evil. God didn't commission us to fear evil. He didn't ask us to fear the devil. <coughs> he didn't ask us to fear evil. I mean, because all of a sudden now we're, well, what if, what if this happens? Well, what if this happens? God did not commission us. That's why we have that faith. That's why we have faith. Amen? And so, but we're not supposed to fear evil. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all. I'm, it's not in here. It's not in here. So if you saw a movie or somebody taught you or you expect the worst, you know, and I wrestle with things too. Okay? But I'm just, I'm just letting you know it's not in here. Amen? I don't have to fear the devil. No. God is not commissioned us to fear the devil. Amen. Why? Because he defeated the devil. Say this with me. Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus, Jesus defeated, defeated the, devil. the devil. Say it again. Jesus, Jesus defeated, defeated the devil. 
Now I want you to say this. Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Say it again. Jesus lives in me. You see how simple that is? Amen. Do you see how simple that is? LaDonna asked, are you a believer? Amen. I think I saw every hand go up. I didn't see this table because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> That's the ignored table over there. You didn't know. Okay. They get ignored a lot. So I have to get over there every now and again. Okay. Amen. But if you're a believer, Jesus lives in you. Lives in you. We're not imitating Christ. He lives in us. And he defeated the devil. Yes. If I could interject here. Um... Hang on. What could we... Honey, can you find me great as he? Can you find me great as he? Go ahead, interject. Um, <laughs> what you were saying earlier about the closer you get with God, the more you see evil. Yes. It's because the Jesus inside of us, the things that didn't bother us before, now become offensive to what's inside of us. And so we recognize it and we see it now right. where we may not have seen it before. Amen. I believe that that's why we're exposed. Did everybody understand what she just said? Amen. And that's what it is. It's light versus darkness. Mm -hmm. And so the light begins to expose the darkness. Yeah. Okay. And what God wants us to do is once we recognize it, he wants us to deal with it. He wants us to get rid of it. He wants us to repent about it. That's why we ask for forgiveness. Amen. And, and this is not going on a witch hunt. Okay. Listen, don't go on a witch hunt in your life. What do I mean by that? Going in trying to fix everything that's bad. That's a witch hunt. That's not living life by faith. Amen. That's too much work for anybody. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you what he wants to work with you on. Because he will give you the strength to deal with that thing in due time. Do you have that? First John 4, 4. Go to 1 John 4, 4. Toward the end, Peter, 1 John. Because Alicia said this uh, last week when she taught on offering, she says, Satan is the god of this world system. He is, the, he is known as the god of this world. That's what he's known as, the god of this world. Amen? And so, uh, 1 John 4, verse 4. It says, you are of God. That's that little Donald was telling us, little children. You have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. Say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. Say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm telling you the greater one lives in you. The Amen. greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. Amen. Praise God. Go back to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, 8-11. 8-11. Eight, eight, okay. I'll be real quick with this thing. We'll probably get out here halfway on time today. Amen. Is this helping anybody? I mean, Amen. seriously. I mean, is it helping you? Why is this important? Because if you're fearing evil, you're not fearing God. And the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So, say that again. If you're fearing evil, you're not fearing God. 
Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you begin, see, a lot of you have started new relationships with God, and you're starting to fear God. Because you can fool most of the people most of the time, but you can't fool God at all. Are <laughs> <laughs> you here? So when you begin to fear God, amen, now you begin to live your life in the sight of God. There's a scripture in the Bible that says this, God who sees in secret will reward you openly. And so God sees in secret and he rewards. So that person that's fearing God, that's walking their life in the fear of God, living their life right. See, the world system says when the cat's away, the cat's away. Not a person that fears God. Amen. I know, no, 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 I got you. Everybody else did too. I know you can't hear them. You to ignore them. <laughs>
What did he say? Is that what you referred to? Okay. Yes. yes. That's okay. What I thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank that's you for the correction. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. That he's, he masked himself as you. And so, why does he mask himself as you? Because you won't come back yourself. You won't come back you. If you think this is, it just runs through my family. <laughs> Yeah. No it just runs through my family. In Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4, I want to read verse 4, and I want to read verse 7. It says, but he answered and said, okay, let me read verse 3. This is Satan tempting Jesus. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He says, and you, Jesus, he's talking to him. Okay? He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why the word of God is so important. That's why it's so important. And in verse 7, he says, again, it is written. Say that. It is written. It is written. See, he's talking about the written word. He said, it is written, thou should not tempt the Lord, because Satan's tempted him again. He says, it is written. If you don't know what's written, how can you know the emotion? Because see, see when, he, when Jesus, when Satan came to Jesus and saying, hey, turn these stones, you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now, if you didn't know the word of God, if you didn't know the motive behind the question, okay, you wouldn't know how to respond. And so when you get the word of God in you, this is why the Bible is important. This is why it's it's this is why we need to study the word of God. So that we can learn the word of God. Amen. Because he wants you go ahead. I found it very, very intriguing with what you just said. This is why we need to study the word of God, because the devil knows the word of God. Right. It says it in that right scripture there. Do you know? Do you know that evil men want to use the word of God? Amen. That's exactly to deceive saying. people. Yep. Yep. To control people. Go to Second Timothy uh, two fifteen. One of my most favorite scriptures. Second Timothy two fifteen. <clears throat> It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To show who? <sighs> study to show who? Us. Yourself. 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 Not to show people, not to carry the big Bible and carry it under your arm and people say, oh, he must be a studier of the word. <laughs> wow, he carries a big Bible. Carry it and put it out. No, to show yourself. Study to show yourself. What do you say? Rightly dividing the word. Rightly dividing it. Why? Because you need to rightly divide the word of truth. If you don't study it, you can't rightly divide it. What does that mean in my own personal life? That's what rightly dividing means. What does that mean to me? You ever. Guys Have your wife ever been talking to you and you don't hear what she's saying? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <Yes. laughs> That's the <laughs> left <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, but our ears heard it. Our ears heard it. And dear Lord, when they asked us, what did I say? We are praying to God. What did she say? <laughs> Because I don't know. Are you, but you weren't paying attention to what was being said. So even though you hear it, that's why you need to study it. That means attentively listen. Go back in your personal time and look at it again. 
so that you can rightly divide it. That's what studying does. Amen. James 1.22, because Shannon touched on this. Go to James real quickly. I got two more scriptures and we're going to be done. That one needs to be highlighted, underlined, starred, and memorized. James chapter 1, verse 22. But, but listen, guys, if you didn't get anything that I said today, may I understand, I mean, all the different messages were connected. Be patient, be positive, amen, I am, amen, and, and we're at war with the devil, amen. Not to be afraid of him, nor are we to be mad at him. Now, hear me, God never asks us to be mad at him. See, 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 if, if you were mad at the devil, then Stephen, while he was being stoned, would have been mad at the people being used by the devil. Wow. He's never asked us to be mad at the devil. Because Stephen was like, hey, lay this not to their charge. It's what I call God's revenge. When you can still show love to your captors. See, see, Paul Burnham wasn't saying, oh, I'm so mad at the devil. He says, no, I'm here with some people who don't know God. And if they die today, they're going to burn in a living hell. I have an opportunity to try to reach them and speak to them. This is why I'm here. Stephen said, lay this not to their charge. And do you know what Stephen said, lay this not to their charge? The main persecutor was looking on and his name was Paul. Amen. Amen. Or was it Saul? Saul. Saul. It was Saul at the time. The main person, the one who wrote over two thirds of the New Testament, was watching this as a persecutor. Wow. And he watched Stephen, the one, one of Satan's main weapons, was watching Stephen's persecution. And he heard Stephen say, Lay this not to the charge. He wasn't mad at the devil, he was trusting in his God. Because he was just like that guy in California that if it wasn't my time, you couldn't take my life. Do you know the only time Jesus spoke to Pilate when he really got him talking? Because Pilate says, don't you know, Jesus, I have power to give you your life? Mm. Jesus said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> time out. Time out. <laughs> okay, I was going to be silent for a little bit, but okay. Hang on here. Let me just make one thing clear. I came to give my life. No man taking my life. If I wanted to, I could call down a legion of 12 angels right now. They can handle it. I don't even need my 12 disciples, my boys, nothing like that. I don't need to raise up a bunch of people. I can call down 12 legions of angels. If you get a free time, go and read it. Try to find and read it. He said, and we can take care of business right here and now. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible says at the end that if the, if the, if the devil would have known what Jesus was up to about dying on the cross, he would have never crucified him. Oh, this is a billion piece chess game that God is playing and all the pieces move when they want to. Somebody say God is good. God is good. Did y'all get that? Yeah. That even when the enemy thinks he got you, when you have faith in God and trust him. Amen. The burners. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? But James here says this, verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Who deceiving you? You. Who's deceiving you? You deceiving you. If you're just a hearer, you're not studying it. You're not trying to do it. I was watching a movie called The Book of Eli. <laughs> That's an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Yeah. And do you know what happened in the movie? He was protecting the word of God. Mm -hmm. And he got to a point towards the end, he was like, God is with me. That it, the world had turned over and it was going crazy and but 
They wanted the book. The evil people wanted the Bible. Not for good reasons, because they wanted to deceive the people. Because they knew the people trusted in the book. And they wanted to use it to control the people. And all of a sudden, he got to the point where they captured him and this other girl that had been walking with him that he had rescued. And they said, if you don't give us the book, we're going to shoot her. And he gave them the book that he was treasuring and protecting. And the lady, when she came back to rescue him, she asked him, she says, I can't believe you gave up the book to save my life. And the words he said was, for 30 years I've been reading this book every day. It was time that I lived. Covenant, reading it, covenant. He said, but his father, he says, I realized it was time for me to live. Who was it that said, do something for someone else? Is that you, Shannon? Give value to others. Yeah, yeah give value to others. It's time to live. It's time to live. Go with me real quickly to... Christ. No. 
And so now the wrestle begins. And you don't begin to accept because now he has had rain in your life for a long time. So it may be a battle, but don't give up. Amen? But if you just let him have rain, as a friend of mine at my job said, he called it communing with the devil. Hmm. That's what he called it. Just communion, just let him talk with you, playing patty cake. Amen, I'm no good. No, that's right, I'm no good. I'll never amount to nothing. Nothing. Nothing I'll never amount to. No. Playing patty cake, communing with the devil. John 8.31 says this. Then, G, then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. I want to give you a picture of my, that continues. Because like Shannon says, we have battles, right? We have trials. Those things that we're going through. There's a line right here. And there's a bunch of believers that start this walk, and they've been through this and that, and they all get up to this line. Some of their clothes are ragged. Some people got, you know, a brace on. Some people are in cut crutches. You got the picture? And so they're all standing at the line, and then here comes Jesus. He walks up to the line, and he says, to those that continue, <laughs> he says, those that continue are my disciples indeed. And they're all looking at each other like, whew, okay, you're going to keep going. What am I trying to say? No matter what happens to you, like Stephen, no matter what happens to you, I'm going to glorify God. Amen. Amen. If something good happens, if something bad happens, why? Because we're not fearing evil. We're not fearing the negative. We're not fearing the worst thing. If the worst thing happens, then God is there. You know what God was saying to me? I was praying before I came here today, and I was like, oh, Father, I was just like just talking to him. And I stood up, and he says, you know what, Derek? He says, I'm with you. And I was like, he said, do you know what's more important than you being, more important than you being with me? He said, that's the most important thing for you, that, I, that you know that I am with you. I was like, wow. And that God is with me. I mean, it just left the footprints on He didn't think God was with him. See, Satan was probably whispering in his ear like he whispered in Eve's ear. See, look, look, see, God wasn't even with you in the hard times of your life. And he knew all the time that God was the one that was carrying you. But he was talking to him, saying, see, where's your God now? Where's your God now? Where is he at now? Jesus said, I was, I was when I was carrying you. That's, that's why you only see one set of footprints. That was me. Amen. I'm with you. And that's one thing we got to know. Well, God's with us. The Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against, uh, us. against us? But I'm saying he's not just for us, that he is with us. With us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. And I want to encourage us to, I, you know, even though I just encouraged them to say, I really don't even believe I brought the word today. I really don't believe the word came uh, through LaDonna about I am and through Debbie about being patient and Amen. positive. Amen. That was the word of the Lord. Amen. And Shannon was talking about the, the wrestle and the faith. Amen. I was like, man, you need to post that faith thing, whatever you read on Facebook or Moses group or whatever, man. That was a real powerful thing. I, would, I really believe that. Amen? I'm just encouraging us to, you know what? Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid of the outcome. Stop being afraid of evil. Stop being afraid of, of what might happen because the Bible says in Romans 8, 28 that God makes all things work together for the good. Because guess what? If we are walking in fear, our mind is clouded and we can't make proper judgments because we're confused. So we have to trust God during the good times, and we have to trust God during the bad times. Amen? It's about fearing God. It's about trusting God. Amen? I'm not saying that there's evil, and there's things that happen, people are sick, and they're in the hospital, we're praying, and things hurt, and there's pain in life. I get that. Amen? Amen? And that's what prayer for, and that's what the Word of God is for. Amen? 
And the Bible talks about that, that trials and tribulations happens to us all, whether you're a believer or whether you're not. But the Bible says that those of us who build our house in Christ, when the storm is over, we're going to be still standing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Are y'all yeah. hearing that? We're going to be still standing. See, as a Christian, we're not better than the next person. We're different. We're not better. We're different because God loves all His people. We're not better than this person or that person. Amen? God does not want that attitude in us. Amen? We're different because we're believers and we're blessed. And the Bible says this, and I'm going to close with this, okay? It says, bitter and sweet water. I'm speaking to myself tonight. It says, bitter and sweet water should not come out of the same faucet. It says, bitter and sweet water should not come out of the same faucet. What should be coming out of our faucet? Sweet water. Amen. Like Donald, like the Donald's correcting Debbie. Let's let's try to make let's try to get those IMs in our spirit, in our system. Amen. So that guess what? That what's coming out of our mouth, because as Jeff said, I read in my walker and I read it. It does. It's, it's whatever follows I am is coming, it's coming after you. It's coming to find you. So what we say in my wife early on, and I, it used to bug me. I couldn't say nothing. Because she said, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Amen. So I want to stand as we pray. I want to say a prayer over us. Amen. That we would be doers of God's word. Amen. So if you would stand with me. And I want to say again, just for a few minutes, if there was somebody that needs personal prayer, I'm here for a few minutes. So just bow our heads. Father God, we thank you uh, just for uh, this time of getting in your word. I ask your blessing upon everyone here, that God, that we would have ears to hear, and that we would just not be hearers, oh God, but that we would become doers yes. of your word, and not just hearers only, Father God, and we would be obedient, oh God, to your word and to your will, Father, uh, in Jesus' name, and Father, if there's anyone that is hurting at the sound of my voice, God, I pray, Lord God, that your comfort, that your guidance, oh God, that your spirit would fill them and guide them this day, in Jesus' name.